I want to play you this clip of Justin Trudeau being put in his place and completely dressed down like like you would not believe by the Chinese president. Okay? J just just look at this. Un unbelievable. Everything we discussed is then leaked to the paper, that's not appropriate. And that's not all the way the conversation was conducted. If there is if there is sincerity on your part, free and open and frank dialogue and this what we will continue to have, we will uh, continue to look to work constructively together, but there will be things we will disagree on and we will have to continue. That's Let's create the conditions first. What the hell was that response? Look how he, look, look how he walks away, man. Like, he, like, he, he just tore him a new one. <laughs> oh my god, that's so awkward. So again, I don't know if you were able to read the subtitles, but the, uh, uh, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, he basically told Trudeau, the last time we spoke, you leaked our conversation to the press. Don't do that. And then and Trudeau's like, no, yeah, but you know, in Canada, we believe in, in free and fair, open dialogue. You know, it's just like posturing, like, we, look, man, look, you filthy communist, we believe in democracy. Okay, but we're, so, we're very nice people. <laughs> he, 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 he dressed him down, man. He put him back in his place. And this is so funny because in the span of 24 hours, Trudeau spreads this lie about Iran and he quietly deletes it, you know, and puts, tucks his tail between his legs and, and doesn't even apologize. <laughs> At the conference, the Chinese president is telling him, look, man, uh, stop leaking these conversations. They're, they're not for the press, right? That was, that was amazing. That was amazing. He didn't have a single response. He just ran away. And I, I really... Look, man, I'm, I'm not saying it was, it, you know, I, I, uh, I feel bad for him, you know, on, on a molecular level. But can I be honest? This, I know it's symbolic. It's largely symbolic. But the fact that you have the Chinese, um, you know, you have Trudeau basically tucking his tail between his legs in front of the Chinese and the Iranians. Th this is really important because it shows you that on the international stage, in international relations, they, you know, the global South, they don't care. He's, you're the Canadian prime minister. So what? I'm going to come and, and call you out right now in front of everybody because you leaked our conversation. You're not allowed to do that. Right. And th th it's just it shows weakness on the part of Trudeau. Inaccuracy, you know, spreading nonsense about Iran and then having to delete it in shame and then being called out by the Chinese president. This is really important. I know it's symbolic, but it, it's, it's also backed up by, you know, hard power. You guys know China geographically, their economy, they're, they're going to, you know, they're slated to be the number one economy in, in a matter of years. Iran is also uh, uh, basically uh, a hopeful future member of the BRICS. It's in the Belt and Road Initiative. These countries actually have the hard power to back the soft power up with. Okay, so it's, it's not just, oh, uh, some, some uh, you know, small talk conversation. No, no, no. No, no, no. This, this is a fundamental change that's occurring, and this is basically, a, you know, it, it just complements the, 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 the hard power uh, and transformation of the global south. And it's really important, because I feel, I feel like um, if you watch how a lot of uh, Western journalists, they speak to foreign leaders, they're very ballsy, you know? They'll, they'll like, sit uh, right across, uh, uh, you know, they'll go to Damascus where apparently no reporters are allowed in, and yet they still got a visa. Uh, they'll go to Damascus and they'll sit in front of the Syrian president, like in his fucking palace, and to his face, they're like, is it true that you burn puppies alive and then drink their blood? <laughs> you know, like, they'll, they'll, they'll just like spit these wild things um, in, in, to his face. And, they, and, and I saw Megyn Kelly do this with Putin, you know, in Russia, in Moscow. And then when they go home in their own countries, where they're supposed to be the most, you know, uh, uh, aggressive as journalists they tuck their tails between their legs and they, they don't dare speak like that to trudeau they don't dare speak like that to biden you know they, they would never say these things at all even former presidents who don't don't matter you know they wouldn't they wouldn't speak like that to bush to his face because they're pussies right they're only journalists when it's when it comes to to the outside but at home they can't do it and this is good someone's got to check these people because the five eyes countries are the most powerful for now 
not for long. And, you know, they need to be brought down to earth a little bit, okay? They need to be brought back down to earth. You are, you are not better than everybody else. Uh, you are not exempt from, uh, you know, uh, may, uh, from, from being called out when you spew lies or you start behaving inappropriately. And, you know, usually you wouldn't see something like this. Honestly, like, Trudeau really, really pissed off this guy for him to go do that in public. In diplomacy, when it comes to international affairs, you don't do stuff like this, okay? You, you go behind closed doors and, and you speak in frankness, right? And you, you, you have the minutes written down and everything is fine and dandy. You, you would not do this unless it was, it was really egregious. And it was. Uh, and it, it, it really shows a lack of professionalism. You don't just go and... and you, look, let me explain this. When you have the Chinese president and the Canadian prime minister meeting... Both of them will have their translators, they will have someone recording the minutes of the meeting, and then each country releases a presser, okay? It's basically a short statement uh, describing what they talked about in the meeting. It's usually not that detailed, but they release a presser. You don't go and leak the goddamn conversation without permission from the other guy. You know, it, it's just bad etiquette. There, there, there is no... These people have no uh, uh, tact... Or, or basic etiquette in diplomacy. It's just embarrassing, you know? And I, was, I remember I was talking about this with, with, uh, uh, with uh, Pepe uh, Escobar. You know, how when, when you look at uh, Annalena Baerbock, who's the, the German foreign minister, or you look, at, uh, you look at Blinken, and they're standing next to Lavrov, they look like amateurs. They, they look like amateurs. They don't know what they're doing. And you, have, you, you used to have, you know, uh, a whole... Um, Hold on, let me pull up this picture. It used to have a whole league of these old school diplomats who, who knew how to do business and talk straight, you know, uh, and behave politely and properly. And I feel like that's fading away. And that's one of the reasons why we have a war in Ukraine now. That's one of the reasons, because no one does diplomacy anymore. The idea of diplomacy is frowned upon. It's like, oh, no, we can't sit with the Russians. Oh, no, we can't, we can't appease Putin. I mean, this is ridiculous. Look, the United States and Russia have had diplomatic ties for ages. It, that, that's fine, you know, uh, to do diplomacy. There's nothing embarrassing about it. It's actually, you, you're going to have to do it one, one way or another. And now they don't do this anymore. And the way they're trying to uh, treat China is similar to what they're doing to Russia and Iran. They want to sideline China. They're jealous. China has, uh, you know, they, they, China's been building all of their stuff for decades. China is now surpassing them in every metric, w whether it's railways, uh, uh, you know, building uh, planes, uh, f phones, big tech, you name it. They are set to overtake the West, and they're jealous, and they do petty stuff like that. So you got to put them back in their place. You got to put them back in their place. This picture is the; these are the BRICS ambassadors. So it's Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, the emerging economies, the emerging powers, and you know Lavrov. Um, he, he, I would say, belongs to that old guard for sure. You know, and you have, um, you have also the uh, the Syrian. Um, former ambassador to the UN, and now he's, I think, deputy foreign minister. So uh, I, I'm talking about uh, Bashar Jafari. He's also in that same kind of league with uh, Lavrov. You know, the, the, the Chinese are extremely polite and patient people, um, as are the Iranians. So just, just think how impolite Trudeau behaved that the Chinese president, like, came like that and called him out in public. I mean, e even uh, if, if it's, um, you know, Chinese or otherwise, as a diplomat or a leader, you know, when you're dealing with foreign leaders, you wouldn't do that usually. But it, it, the fact that the Chinese did it, it really shows you how egregious Trudeau's behavior was, that he had to come and personally do that. I mean, that, that was, you know, I, I just wanted to, to underscore that. Uh, diplomacy is all about... Not just body language, but it's, it's all about things that are said implicitly. And here he had to go full explicit with him. So Trudeau fucked around and he found out. 